So we're on the road, we're taking a big trip to help another fellow YouTuber and hobbyist um, move his tank into his house and get him set up for the big build. So on this video, what we're going to do, we're on the road. We're heading to Pennsylvania to check out uh, Travis or Fisher Hex, as you may know him. Uh, he's had um, he's got a, a big build coming up, and he needed some help getting the tank from the front of the house into his uh, basically his fish room. So on this video, we're going to cover that. We're going to take a look around his setup and see how he has things. Everything that is covered in the video is also going to be linked in the um, description down below to his videos that, that cover that basic setup. So this is basically my introduction to his, his stuff and also you'll be able to then go into the description and seek out the different steps that he took in setting up this dream fish room. Uh, so I hope you like it and let's get on the road. So not many of you know this, but Travis was the very first YouTuber that I ever met in this community. And when he asked uh, for volunteers to come over his house to help him move this monster tank into the house, I had no idea that when I got there and saw this crate sitting in his driveway, taking up the room that a small car would, that I would be in for a pretty long day. Then we looked at the path that we had to take to get it actually in his basement, which was around the side of his house, in the back, and then down five houses down to get it actually where it had to go. Well, we had enough guys and it looked like we'd have a pretty rough time of it, but we got it done. Now I didn't record much of the actual move because my hands were full at the time, but once we got it in, got to where it had to be and started taking the panels off. It was then that I realized how gorgeous this tank is. Now during this process of getting the screws out, as you see Billy Pipes doing, I don't know how Travis was able to stand it because to me it's like slowly unwrapping a Christmas present that you want to get a good look at so bad. Uh, when we unboxed it and got everything going, we moved it into the position and got ready to get everybody uh, ready for, to lift it onto the stand. Now this is the tough part, actually lifting it. This thing weighed a, weighed a lot. Even with the amount of guys we had, it was heavy. And thank God for these handles and, and the extra people all moving together as one. We were able to get it off the bottom of the crate and up onto the stand and position it where it would have to go. Once it was in place came the tedious process of going back and forth, making sure that it was sitting on the stand right, which turned out to be a little bit more interesting than, uh, than I thought it would be. And then once the tank's leveled, it's in place, you can see how gorgeous this tank is. The glass is labeled as ultra clear glass. And when I tell you, it, 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 it's unbelievable how when you look at, say, the frag tanks on the left hand side of it, with your naked eye, it looks one way. But when you look through the glass, um, through the tank, it makes everything look totally different. As you can see right here, this is looking down the tank at the uh, frag tanks beyond it. And then when you move to the side with your naked eye, it looks totally different. Now, Travis unpacked the uh, overflow and it led to an interesting event that happened during this. We couldn't figure out how to hold the overflow basket um, up because there wasn't that much room between the wall and the tank. And luckily, this young man volunteered, fit in between the two and was able to hold it up while Travis mounted the uh, bulkheads. This also leads me to something else. If you take a look at how this, this is a custom tank and how the overflow is set up is really amazing. There is no towers inside the tank. There's very, very uh, little in the way of wasted space inside this tank. It's all basically area where you can fit anything you want in it. Now, after we got everything set up, I was able to take a look around um, Travis's fish room and was able to go through everything from 
here is his holding stations with the red, white, and blue theme. And then um, across the floor was the frag tanks. And of course, I had to take a good look what was inside of them. And uh, it was just amazing how well organized he is and how everything's set up and has its own place, which also leads to um, the next video will have an update attached to it. And you'll see what I, was, what I did when I uh, went to Travis's. And after it was all over, I had to go shopping. So I have a few pieces of uh, Fisher Hex Coral in my tank. And so if you can, definitely check out uh, Fisher Hex's website and get yourself some coral from them because all the coral is really awesome. And uh, also one other thing I wanted to mention was when I took a look at this massive skimmer that he has underneath this fragging system, uh, the, the video of it does not show just how big this thing is. So that's going to be it for me, and I'll leave you with Billy Pipes doing his best Travis Fish of Hex impersonation. <laughs> and for anybody who doesn't know, I run phytoplankton through my computer. Yeah. So with that being said, that's going to be it for me. Check out Travis's links in the description below, and I'll see you soon around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.